Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. We've been discussing what's just happened in the Middle East, the dramatic takedown by Delta Force Commandos of the United States Army of al-Baghdadi, the founder and leader of the vicious uh, group ISIS, uh, with Claire Lopez, who is an expert on all things Islamic, especially in the Middle East, the Vice President of Research at the Center for Security Policy in Washington, D.C. Claire, thanks for coming back. Always good to be with you, Barry. Thank you. So we've been talking about what happened, and now we're talking about what's going to happen in the aftermath of this dramatic uh, takedown of the vicious leader, al-Baghdadi. In specific, let's talk about what we mentioned um, on break, which was there's a number of oppressed minorities in the Middle East. Uh, There's Christians, Yazidis, and others. Um, What can those people who have been horrifically brutalized by followers of ISIS, what can they expect in the near term? Well, as some of them do um, have hopes of, and they are, returning um, to some of those areas that the Islamic State had conquered earlier. Um, too many, though, remain in, in various, uh, you know, um, refugee camps. Um, many are seeking to emigrate from the region. Um, I'm afraid that we are going to see the gradual diminishment of the presence of some of these ancient, ancient communities. You know, Assyrian Christians, uh, some of the earliest Christian communities in the history of, of, of Christianity, the Yazidis, of course, um, and others, as you say, um, their numbers are dwindling, and I, I am not sure we're ever going to see them rebound. Yeah, it's, it's really, really sad, the loss of culture and history and obviously the death of thousands as a result of the spread of this vicious hatred of everyone and everything different from their strict Islamic code of existence. And on that note, it troubles me greatly, I mean greatly, that the United Nations and the United States media seems to think global warming is going to destroy the earth, but can't mention the fact that there are thousands of Christians being slaughtered and Yazidis being crucified and men, women, and children being executed because they're different. Not different in the sense of some sort of invading army. They've lived there for, as you said, a thousand or more years. And yet, it's the few like us that seem to care and are crying out, let's save these people, but it's not in the media. No, you're right. It's not in most of the media. So uh, again, thank you uh, to you, Barry, and American Truth Project for for offering your platform at least to reach as many people as we can this way and, you know, posting on social media. Um, But, but, the, the willful blindness, I think, is, is what you're getting at among not just the media uh, here in the United States and the West, uh, but academics, um, even senior ranks of national security. Um, they don't want to face what this is. And also because they don't do their homework, they don't know that this is merely the continuation, as I said earlier, of a long continuum of uh, vicious offensive jihad warfare that's not going to end until either they win or we do. Well, on that note, let's talk about policy because that's what you do. We have an enemy that, as we've talked about a number of times, is now all over the world. The leader is dead, but there'll be a new one. There might already be. They haven't made their introductory video yet, but I'm sure it will come soon. And their intention is to kill us all, or enslave us, or convert us, and to have the flag of the caliphate fly uh, in capitals all over the West, starting in Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, these people are part of a war that has been going on since Islam started. It's not 20 years old. It's not 100 years old. It's 1,000 plus years old. So the question is, what should 
America be doing? What should our government be aware of and what should our policy be as a guiding force against this? I'll mention an article, Barry, that um, I think gets at what you just asked in a, in a very good way. Um, this article is called The Hornet's Nest of Muhammad's Islam, and it's written by Antin Elasi. I don't recognize the name, uh, but he offers um, a multi-point plan uh, for what we must do if we're going to survive, if we're going to defeat uh, this Islamic jihadist enemy. Extreme power is what he begins with, and that's, that's what President Trump has been showing over there in uh, the uh, Islamic State strongholds. Demonstration of the deficiencies of Islam. In other words, um, how uh, the people who are subjected to it um, uh, you know, are not living very happy lives. Uh, moral corruption. Uh, if, if it can be shown, and we, we, we should be showing, the moral failings. Moral according to our Judeo-Christian code, not moral according to the Quran or the Islamic code. So moral corruption, um, you know, the, 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 the rape, the theft, uh, and, and, and all of the rest of that. Uh, logical inconsistencies. The author here cites uh, parts of the Quran which are absolutely incomprehensible. I mean, linguistically speaking, incomprehensible. Um, uh, the uh, historical horrors, the, the history. Bill Warner of Political Islam does a tremendous job of, of, of outlining these uh, historical uh, facts throughout uh, the history of the Islamic conquests. The many imperfections of the Quran, you know, as I was saying, the, uh, the gobbledygook, literally linguistic gobbledygook that nobody can make heads or tails out of in the Quran. Um, theological blunders, um, pointing out all these things. Finally, he says, sociological realities on any measure by the United Nations or any other organization of the accomplishment of places, countries, civilizations. You're talking about the betterment of, of, of human lives, opportunity, be they economic, be they health uh, improvements, um, you know, longer lives, uh, better lives, healthier lives, um, on every measure uh, of education and anything else you can think of, those places under Islamic law consistently do way worse uh, than the free places that offer uh, more human beings, more opportunity uh, than, than any other place or time in, in, in the entire history of, of the world. Uh, yeah, I think it's a perfectly logical, insane response. I would have an argument with the idea of going before the United Nations, which is controlled by uh, an Arab block of Islamists that refuse to allow the truth about these horrors to be discussed. And as we've talked about for years, um, you put Libya and the Sudan and Yemen on the Human Rights Council and can't understand why slaughter continues. You know, it's like the Nazi party um, in Germany in World War II uh, pronouncing uh, interpretations of Jewish law. Uh, you can't have the hens um, being run by the wolves in this case, and that's what the United Nations is. It's a worthless organization when it comes to stamping out terror. However, they do make it very clear they hate the Jews and they hate Israel. Is it any wonder that nothing gets done there? Claire, thanks so much. Uh, this has been incredible education, and I hope, especially that last article, uh, gets read and understood by our viewers, who I want to remind them to take out their cell phones and text the word TRUTH, TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202, where you will be signed up for our free text message service. You never miss an episode. You get every article. It's always free. and We'll send it to you on a daily basis. Thanks for Claire joining us for American Truth Project today. I'm Barry Newsbaum at ATP Report.